I hope I need to shut the door. Great start to the video. History is full of anything. Good, bad, and the ugly. One cause of this historical ugliness is inbreeding, when often royal and aristocratic figures in history would marry within their own kind, and this seriously limited the gene pool, frequently leading to abnormalities. However, not all perpetrators of inbreeding were elite. Some were extremely ordinary. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the 10 most inbred people known to history. Number 10, Isabella II of Spain. Isabella II was the daughter of Ferdinand VII of Spain. Isabella's birth was an intense joy to her father who desperately wanted an heir to starve off liberal factions in Spain. Isabella and her sister were products of intermarriage, however. Isabella's mother was the niece of Ferdinand. Despite this close relationship, Isabella did not suffer from many difficulties other than her weight. However, this begs a question. Was Isabella II illegitimate? Number nine, the Fugates of Kentucky. Although this is not an individual, I feel necessary to include them. The Fugates of Kentucky, yup, Kentucky and not Alabama, were a family from the 19th century. In this period, a wife and a husband both had... In this period? What? In this family, a wife and a husband both had a recessive gene. They both had the gene for metho... Methamogoblin? Globin, no. Okay, I don't know what it's called. I can't pronounce it. Here you go. Have, have fun trying to do it yourself. Anyway, Martin and Elizabeth Fugate both had this recessive gene, resulting in four of their seven children having blue skin. Now this occurred as far back in the 1820s, but remember in this period, especially in Southern America, prejudice was rampant for any difference really anyone would have, and having blue skin was an immense cause for prejudice. Because of this prejudice, the Fugates did not feel comfortable going out and marrying many other members of society, simply because, well, they couldn't. And instead, they married each other, resulting in messy inbreeding. Number eight, Elizabeth Batteroy. Elizabeth Batteroy is known as the evilest woman in the early modern period. She caused the deaths of almost 1,500 girls. More recently, historians are exposing her epilepsy, which is a likely cause of her bloodlust. Back in the early modern period, ingesting blood was offered as a solution to epilepsy, and perhaps this was the reason for her bloodlust. Nonetheless, Batteroy's inbreeding resulted in this condition. Among many others, her parents were born from the same family and were most likely second cousins. Number seven, Louis the Grand Dauphin. More unknown to history is the heir to Louis XIV of France. This Louis, known as the Grand Dauphin, was unfortunately very inbred. The Grand Dauphin's parents were not only first cousins, but they were double first cousins, meaning that Louis the Grand Dauphin only had four unique great-grandparents instead of the usual eight that most people would have. Number six, Don Carlos of Spain. Don Carlos of Spain was as equally inbred as Louis the Grand Dauphin. Both of them only had four unique great-grandparents instead of the usual eight that most people would have. However, I've included Don Carlos as more inbred than Louis, because Don Carlos was mentally insane. Because of Don Carlos's insanity, his father, Philip II of Spain, felt it necessary to make sure he had another son, because he clearly didn't want this lunatic on the throne. Don Carlos was reportedly insane, but also vehemently cruel. One time while chasing and possibly sexually harassing female servants, he had an almost fateful head injury. This caused his insanity to spiral out of control, Don Carlos' inbreeding meant that he lost control of his senses and he ultimately starved himself to death in his early 20s. Still, Don Carlos is not the last Habsburg to make this list. Number five, Charles II of Spain. If you know much about inbreeding in history, you probably have heard of Charles II of Spain. However, most lists misleadingly place him as the most inbred thing that has ever occurred on earth. Although this is plausible, because Charles II looked like this. He actually was not the most inbred person known to history. 
And in fact, I will be showing you four more people who were more inbred than this freak of nature. Charles II was so inbred, however, that he was unable to speak until he was four years old and unable to walk until he was eight. Throughout his life, he struggled to ingest food as his tongue and bottom lip had grown so large. Charles was the last Habsburg king of Spain and desperately needed to produce an heir. However, because of his inbreeding, he was indeed impotent. He passed away in his late thirties when his head was full of water. If you'd like to know more about Charles II of Spain, then please head over to this video. Number four, Margarita Teresa of Spain. Margarita was a full sibling to Charles II of Spain, meaning that they both shared the exact same consanguinity coefficient. However, Margarita Teresa baffles many historians and geneticists, seemingly because, well, although she shared this consanguinity coefficient with her clearly mentally ill brother, she was relatively healthy. Although she looked inbred to many, inheriting her mother's potato nose and a fat bottom lip, she was indeed healthy. Unlike her brother, Margarita was not impotent and she fell pregnant six times before dying from bronchitis at the age of 21. Still though, she was married off to her maternal uncle. <coughs> Number three, Tutankhamun. Here's someone on this list you have definitely heard of. Tutankhamun does not require much introduction. He was a pharaoh of Egypt at a very young age, approximately nine years old when he came to the Egyptian throne. Tutankhamun's father was a famous pharaoh, Akhenaten, who turned his back on the polytheistic pantheon in Egypt and instead worshipped only one deity. Tutankhamun's mother is debated, but she's likely the full sibling of Akhenaten, which means that Tutankhamun's parents were full siblings. Yikes. When we zoom out further, we can actually see that Tutankhamun's ancestors had been marrying siblings for ages, decades, and almost centuries. For example, his ancestor Amenhotep I married his own grandmother, and they had a daughter together, meaning that Amenhotep's daughter was also his aunt. Number two, Maria Antonia of Austria. Maria Antonia of Austria is our last Habsburg on this list. Maria Antonia is also the most inbred Habsburg on this list. Nonetheless, Maria Antonia is unknown to most in history, despite her being more inbred than her mother, Margarita Teresa, and her freak uncle, Charles II. Maria Antonia's parents were uncle and niece, and her grandparents too were uncle and niece, meaning that she was the most inbred out of any Habsburg before her and after her. Her mother, Margarita, had given birth four times, but all of them, apart from Maria Antonia, were so freakishly inbred that they soon died. Despite this massive inbreeding, Maria Antonia was relatively healthy and more attractive than her parents. She also finally married someone outside of her family, but she unfortunately passed away at the age of 23 from childbirth. As a young princess, Maria Antonia was actually encouraged to marry her uncle Charles II. Can you imagine how freakish their children would have been? Number one, Cleopatra. Surprisingly, Cleopatra is the most inbred person known to history. Now, I say surprising because unlike other people mentioned in this video, Cleopatra was exceptionally gifted. Before the age of 18, Cleopatra was already fluent in many languages. Estimates place her at fluent in 12 languages, including ancient Greek, Egyptian, Aramaic, and Latin. Cleopatra's family, similar to Tutankhamun's, were very closely related. Her father married his full sister, also known as Cleopatra, and Cleopatra only had a few ancestors who were born outside of her family, including a princess of Syria and another foreign princess known as Cleopatra. However, more recent studies have suggested that Cleopatra was actually not the daughter of her parents, or at least not the daughter of her mother. Unlike the other children known to Cleopatra V, Cleopatra's mother, Cleopatra did not express any genetic abnormalities, which is quite strange knowing that Cleopatra is almost twice as inbred as the freak of nature Charles II of Spain. We might never know for sure, but it's possible that Cleopatra's mother was an outsider, a concubine from Egypt. And if this is true, Cleopatra's ancestry isn't just up for debate, but her entire race is up for debate. Although we have knowledge of family trees and consanguinity calculations, 
we may never know for sure how inbred some of these people were, especially as they were very high functioning and it's possible that some of them were secretly illegitimate. But we may never know. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is The Shy Historian and I hope you will stay tuned very soon for another video.